Hello there, uh, welcome back. This is Alan, and we are now on uh, lesson 19 in this series on uh, numbering so far. <coughs> and uh, right now we're in the middle of learning how to read and write from uh, DOS's standard uh, input and output files. The one that we're working on right now is called standard input. And in your program that looks like in a C program that that's given this name, standard input. There's another one for output that we're using as well. To print our, we're printing a line feed using standard input to standard output. And that also has a name in C program it's called standard output. We're not there yet, but anyway. Yeah, those are the names. Um, I'm just going to run our program show you what we've caught so far. When we run our program, we can type, we can type things in. It does that. Put spaces, we can put carrot return, etc. etc. And that's fine and great. Um, except well, we have <coughs> a number of problems. As usual. And the main problem, definitely a problem, is we have no way out and stop our loop from executing and get out of the program. <coughs> there is a way to get out. I told you before that Control C will get us out. And indeed, it does. But that's not the natural way to exit a program that's reading from a, from a file. These files, standard in, standard out, well, standard in specifically, standard in. That's one of these files which is called a stream or a stream type file. And what that means is that for a, a file that has the same characteristics as this one, we can read that one byte at a time, read and read and read. Uh, but it's like a, a river flowing. We, we can read the next character, the next character, and so on. But we can't sort of go back. And we can't go backwards and forwards. There's no seeking. We just read what comes to us. And what we want to find out <coughs> is when we hit the end, basically. Now, in the early days, even before DOS was invented, files were stored on the, these magnetic tape cassette. Uh, cassette tape things, you know, um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but a uh, uh, cassette tape is uh, just like a long, thin sheet of paper, and there's rollers on either side, and the rollers turn, and as the rollers turn, you read off what's on the tape on the tape as it's passing through the read head. So uh, that's there's where your river is essentially, and in those so in a situation like that, there's no way for you to know ahead of time how long the thing is that you're reading is when when to stop. So they invented a, a magical character which will tell you when you hit the end of a particular file, and that character happens to be. They call the end of file character. And it has a specific value, and that value is 1a. <clears throat> That's the end of file ASCII character. This ASCII bit is a little bit important. Don't have to worry about it right now. 
<clears throat> so if you saw a 1A, then you knew you could stop reading and you're done reading the file. Great. If you're curious, what happens to me 26? Decimal. We don't care. Okay. Well, so that's great. That was before disks came along. Then along came disks, and you didn't, we didn't need it in the file character anymore. And uh, because you knew you could find out immediately how big a file was, and uh, so you don't need anything to tell you when the a file is, because you knew how big it was. But for the keyboard, there is no actual size to read in, because you can keep typing forever. So for the keyboard, we still need we still need the end of file. And we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We, we can enter one in. Control Z, in fact. It looks like that. When added to our screen that we've been typing in here, will produce a 1A character. So if, if you're typing something in, you hit Control Z, that'll be like the end. In fact, the more the more command that comes with the command interpreter uses that same, just like we've been doing. If I put a control Z here and press enter, it quit. So it eventually it saw the control Z and it quit. And so we'd like our thing to do that too. From before, no. Let's just see if we can do that first. Cats. Dots. Cats. Alright, what do we want here? We have a little thing that compares the incoming character and is checking to see if it's a D. And if it's a D, we're adding a which is a carriage return we're adding a line to. Okay, no problem. And then we're just then we're just jumping back to the beginning. Now I don't want to jump back to the beginning anymore. I want to add a new test. So I want to get rid of this line, add some more testing, and then continue. So instead of just starting all over from scratch, what I wanted to do to save this bit off that we have already, this bit, move it away somewhere, put what we need in, and then bring it back. This isn't much to retype, but in general, if this was a lot of stuff, we'd like to be able to do this without having to retype it all in again. So, I'm going to do 200, let's say. Okay, that's all zeros there. I'm going to use a special move command, M, and that works a little bit like fill. So we give M, and then address range, and then a destination. It doesn't say so, but you give a destination. So what I want is to move all this stuff starting at 108 to 200. And uh, I don't want to go from 108 up to 111, 112, which is nothing. So let's see if it works. And put all that and we're at 200. Okay, clearly it did something. And is it right? 108. No, it's B402, B402, okay, it's all the same one, see? So now that's saved up. We can fill in what we want and we'll bring it back using the same move. I want to get rid of, I want, instead of jumping at 108, I want to put something else here. I want to compare. Another comparison 
And we see if that's the special end of file character. And if that is true, I'm going to do something. I'm not sure yet. So we'll just jump to ourselves for now. Uh, and if it isn't, then I want to, then I want to resume the program. Now, if it is, then this guy should go to one LB. So let me fix that quickly. Now, one LB. Actually, no, I'm going to go to one LB. That's where I want to put, put the stuff I moved away at. So that's not good. Let's put that. Oh, it's okay. Now at one at one oh C I want to bring all this stuff back in front. I don't have to, but I want to. So I wanna take from uh, I wanna move from two hundred to uh, two oh seven. That's eight bytes. One Restore that to 108. Um, and I want to point something out too at this point. At 200 is that code that we sent to Bob. And it's kind of impossible for me to show you, but I'll try. This was the code that we sent off to 200. This part's all the same. This used to say jump to 100. But it doesn't say jump to 100 anymore. It says jump to 1F6. And that's because this is a relative jump. Jumps by uh, a certain amount, positive, negative, relative to where this is. And 1F6, it turns out, from this point, would have been 100 from where it used to be. So this part's going to be messed up where I've restored it. And you'll see what we've got so far. Alright. Um, compare with the jump to 10A, which is no longer correct. When it's the, in fact, we want to go to 10C. So let me fix that quickly. No, I'll we'll fix that in a minute. Here's what I just restored. Move into A high to print out the line feed, and this should say jump to 100. But since I've shifted everything down by 4 bytes, this is off by 4. So I'm going to repair that. So that's fixed now. Now this jump if car if it's car so the carriage return should go not to 10A anymore. We want that to go to this one, 10E. So that 106 is wrong. Say one zero e. So now we're doing pretty good. This is correct. This now goes to our carriage return handler. Puts a line feed, resumes the program, and now we have a new comparison in here uh, for end of file. So end of file, we want to go. Beyond all this, in fact, 116 is where we want to go. So, fix up 108. Not 108. Uh, it's 108. Now, it's 0 to 116. So far, so good. 
So if it's another file character, go to 116 where we have nothing. We know what we want to put there. Quick. And this should be the whole program. Read a character. So carriage return. Go to B. Go to 2 for writing. Go to line feed. Call in 21. Resume program. Next. That, if that's failed, but it turns out that it was an in the file character, and, and, that's, and if that's true, we go to 116, we go to quit, and we're done. And we have an 18 byte program. The X is clear, run it out, and that's it. Yeah. So here's our program. I run it. And it's fine. And if I put a control Z somewhere. I'm going to read it immediately and it should quit. And it did. With the slight problem of actually printing, printed out a 1A character. That is where the um, visual representation of a 1A. That's pretty good. Now, as I said, these end of file things used to be uh, appended to every single file, but that's no longer the case. And I'm show you that I'm not lying to you. But first, clearing everything out here. I'm going to the debug. And I'm going to put in this text file instead of a program. And it doesn't care. It's going to load everything at 100 like usual. And you can dump and look. So there it is. See? Here's that, Here's that text file. Dumping, <coughs> dumping, dumping, dumping. And eventually we get to the end of the file. You will notice that the last two characters here are a uh, carriage return and a line feed and there's no 1A that we would have that is the character that's supposed to tell us that it's <coughs> that we hit the end of the file. So in fact if we tried to use this as input we're gonna we're not gonna get our end of file and the whole thing's gonna crash. But we can fix it for this file in particular by just adding a one in here. And we'll do that even though no even though we weren't given that. Um, that's six position six one F. And we'll put a one A there. Okay, so now we have an end of file character on our file, and uh, I want to write that change out. Current file size is 51F, we add one to that, that's 520. We'll write it out. And here's our file, here's our text file. If I edit this, Go all the way to the end, you'll notice that there's no nothing visual here to say that they've added an extra character to this. In fact, uh, this edit program is treating the 1A as if it were an end file. 
we could add more. So we added more to this file. Okay. Inside this, let's try. Debug. Okay. Okay. Add more text to this file. Following. The Oh, so much junk in here. Let me clear this out again. Okay. Now, I'm going to enter in more text following this end file marker. So that would be 620. And it turns out that this debug program will allow me to use quotation marks to type actual text. Put here is some more text. Follow the email web character. Um, oh, oh. oh my god, do we need any of that? No. I won't put so much. Here is some more. Okay. Okay, what's that? Six thirty one two three. Six thirty six. Uh, space. That should be put in on. Mm -hmm. Six fifty seven. No, uh, zero one three three four five. Six. Yeah, so seven six fifty seven. The edit program. Okay, now how many, how big is our current file? It's 568. And like that, <coughs> like that. Eh? Okay, so now we've written it out, and just to be sure that we got everything, we can quit this. Well, first let's clear everything out. And then zero. And we'll load it up again. And dump it out. And there it is. So, same as before, here's the end of file, and here's the extra text following the end of file count. Now, according to theory, when we edit this, it shouldn't show us everything following that. I'm not sure this is going to happen, but we'll see. Well, the edit program is actually showing us all that bit we entered in there, so that's no good. But, but remember, the edit program is not... Is not um, one of those streamy things. It's it's not using the stream 
read? Obviously not. Uh, so let's try something that does, like type. And that one, as you can see, did not include the extra characters that we added on the end. So, as far as uh, streamy things are concerned, uh, that end of file character means what it says. That's the end of the end of the stream. And that should work for our program. Uh, if I type this in. Let's see now. I take the output of the code, but this does not output the in the file character. But we can try. Who knows? There's a DOS test. Oh, it worked. Okay, so as you can see, the program quit when it saw the end of file character. Uh, it's has the same problem of extra line feeds. Uh, if you, I don't know if I mentioned this before, um, you'll notice this particular file <coughs> it's unlike the keyboard in that it has, it doesn't need us to add an extra line feed to it. It already has a uh, carriage return and line feed together. So our program is adding extra line feeds for it and we need to. So that's one problem. The other problem, of course, is this <coughs> echo. However, we're, we're going to get rid of the echo. <coughs> so we won't see that bit anyway. Um, now I've written here a little C program that should be equivalent to what we've got. Um, this get with E is the same as get a character from console with echo. Here's our comparison with D. If we see a D, we're putting an A. Here's our check for the end of file character. And I'm, I'm not using a loop, I'm using go to, so it looks just like our program. Uh, and if none of that's true, it goes to next character and so on. When this is true, finally it should go to quit program. Which here is I put a the C way to put a program <coughs> which is just to return and to provide a, a number of us. We don't actually have a number to provide in our program, so we can't actually do this bit. Anyway, I compiled that. I already have, let me do it again. Compiles. It creates something called name.obj uh, and this automatically does a link. You can see there are two things happening. One is a compiling bit and after it's done it does a linking bit and that turns this obj into an executable called main. I can run it and I'm clicking. Stuff in. It was very slow to respond to my thinking. Okay, it's got to load the whole universe into existence before it's ready to go. And a control Z should get me out. That's that much is the same. Um, and I tested this before. What well, isn't the same is this doesn't work for some reason or other. With the main. It's just sort of stuck there. It's, it's still taking characters from keyboard and not from the file. So, in that sense, this, this sketch 
with echo. It's not the same as the getch that we're using. It must be using a different kind of getch. But that's not important. That can be fixed. Okay, so I'll leave that there for now.